Man, the finals are something else. And the three geniuses here did not think we would be where we are. We're just going to get that disclaimer out off the top. Welcome to the Ryan Goodman Tangway Along for the Ride podcast as we talk about the NBA. Of course, we're talking about the Celtics and Warriors. Bob's got something to say about Quinn Snyder, too, what's going on in Utah. That's coming up. I'm going to start with this right off the top. I'm going to go to our senior member because he has seen it all. Uh, he was there when the game was invented in Springfield. Uh, Bob Ryan, to me, this was the best game for this Celtic group to this point. Game three. It was a necessary statement that they get it, that they understand what got them in trouble uh, in the two games, which includes the game one, you know, which they, they salvaged with the with a, a miraculous fourth quarter. But still, they had transgressions to leading up to that. <laughs> the turnover thing, uh, they cut it down. They had 12, they're still for 19 points, but uh, it, that's, that's a lot better than 33 points. They give up in turnovers the game before. There were a couple of lapses, a couple, but it was better. I just think they responded. Uh, they didn't They they didn't worry about Draymond Green, you know, and right. he didn't worry about him. And and and, and was we kind of wondered how he would present himself in this game. And, and, and uh, you know, he, he wasn't as crazy as he was in the second game. Anyway, isn't it? I look at this whole thing in general. I mean, this is a final exam. This these finals. They, they, they passed all the all the uh, other increments on the way. This group hasn't done it before. They have to prove that they can do it. That they can master what all the things it takes in order to become a champion and to win a seven game series when 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 it, 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 it's the culmination of the season. And I, I'm very encouraged. I'm not crazy. I'm not giddy. Uh, it ain't over. But I'm very encouraged. I thought that was a very encouraging performance. Yeah, and Jeff, if, my, if I may interject, <clears throat> excuse me, but what I want to elaborate on my point is this team could take a punch. I mean, my God, they can take a punch. I mean, they were terrible in game two. And <laughs> I don't know if know, that's taking a punch, though. I, but, I feel like that's more inconsistency than necessarily taking a punch. Okay, let me, let me just say this, though, and I'm going to let you do yeah. your thing. Yeah. It's their way, though. It's, I mean, I get it. I understand what you're saying. I understand it. But last night, they're up 18, and Golden State comes back. They take the lead, and I go, here we go. And they took the punch again. I mean, it's just what they do. I've never seen a team look so bad and so good at the same time. Your well, they, they just, you know, they're not one of these dominant NBA teams. Right. right. Like they're, they're just not. And, and there is no team like that out there right now. It's not Golden State from a few years ago. It's not, you know, the old Celtics teams with, with Bird, McHale and Parrish. This is a good team that, again, is still finding its way, but obviously is good enough to compete and maybe win an NBA title right now. The thing they had last night was everybody played well, where game two, everybody played like garbage. I mean, seriously, you couldn't find a guy who played well in game two for the Celtics, and you couldn't find a guy who didn't play well in game three. And a lot of that, I felt like, was home, home cooking there. They, you know, the crowd, and I know they hadn't had a major home court advantage, but I felt like last night was critical with that, with a lot of the guys that needed to have bounce back games. Marcus Smart being one, Jalen, Jalen Brown came out of the gates unbelievable. And they needed that. They needed to come out strong, which they did. But it was everybody. Grant Williams, Peyton Pritchard, Derek White was good again. But the key for me, and I said it going in, was Marcus Smart. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know the numbers. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we could all you know, put in the time to do it. But uh, how many games they lose when he plays anywhere near to that level? Ever, ever. When he plays that way, they generally win. And, and he was a wonderful two, two way player last night. Uh, absolutely. Here's what I loved about the, the uh, I felt best about the game. When, when Golden State made the run, which included the bizarre seven point possession, which I, you know, uh, how many times she's done, you know, bizarre seven point possession. <laughs> they answered immediately. That was the only lead Golden State had. They had two leads right. all night, two nothing in 83, 82. And, that was the only lead they had in the second half. They answered immediately. I think I think Smart hit a three. Well, I'm he not did. sure. He did. He yeah. did. And they and they next thing you know, it's up to eight. It's nine. 
11. And then the fourth quarter was maintain maintenance. Fourth quarter was simply maintenance, you know, keep the equipment uh, uh, at arm's length. And, and then eventually uh, we're going to watch uh, the Luke Cornette show, you know? And so does it? Oh, that's what I like. The Bob. response when Golden State came back was really encouraging. Doesn't it just look like now when you, when you look at it on the court, first of all, the Celtics look bigger, stronger, more athletic, younger, all of it. Um, but like you look at it now and you're almost like, how is Golden State going to win this series? That, that's kind of what I think of right now. Right. Unless Steph goes for 40 and Clay goes for 20. And w- again, I've said this over and over to you guys. I don't trust Andrew Wiggins. I don't <laughs> trust him. I didn't tr- like his his stat line always looks better than than how he plays to me. His stat line is never indicative of Andrew. Like I thought he played like like garbage last night. And you look at it, he's still at 18 points. He had seven rebounds. But to me, he's got to step up and be the number two guy when I don't think he's capable of doing that for a championship team. The following is not a parochial observation. The following is the observation of looking and watching how this thing has unfolded from the time they threw the ball up in game one. The only way the Golden State Warriors are going to win this series is if the Boston Celtics have beat themselves. Right, the right. Boston Celtics, as you outlined, Jeff, have much more going for them. And the only way they're going to lose this series is if they screw themselves up. And and um, that's why I liked last night. They, one of the things I had to prove was, oh, by the way, we can win an important game at home. That was that was a thing. True. And they, they you know, because they've had these great crowds. You can't say they haven't been supported. The crowds have been as good as you could ever ask in the history of this particular building, which includes, you know, the the 08 team. The crowds have been terrific. The crowds are doing their job. You know, they're 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 doing what they're supposed to do. And and the team has not been rewarding them often enough. But last night they did reward them. And as I said, they rewarded them with a with a pretty good start to finish performance. And when they had their little slip up, they said, okay, let's go. Boom. And they go right back and they we re- re- they won the game twice. I always call that re-winning. They re-won the game and they did it. They re-won the game with well, you know, with efficiency, ease. I mean, so they are better, but they if they just don't do stupid things, they're going to win this series. See, when you say they are better, we feel that way now. And I've been hearing that in various places. The Celtics are better and better. If Clay Thompson, and he kind of got hot last night. Oh, he did get hot. Yeah, I mean, he, he is bad he, early. He was bad early. But if, but, if, <laughs> but if he finds his way and all of a sudden becomes Clay Thompson, are the Celtics better? Well, he was Clay Thompson last night and, and, and last after that start. That that and there's one particularly play, the one transition shot. Now, I, 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 they can, I still, they can survive because they have other assets that the, the Warriors can. not Here's my worry, one worry that the thing that can change everything for me and change the whole part of it. It's Robert Williams. When Robert Williams is out there and and doing what he does, they, they have no answer. And this this guy may held the world's record for most distance covered blocking a shot. I mean, this is, I'm not lying. This is Russell-like. I, I remember a time when, I remember when uh, Tommy Heinsohn was going crazy calling Greg Steamstra. Uh, you know, remember that? Seems- yes, I do. Yeah, about I was, Russell, Bob, and we all laughed. I was there. <laughs> all right, we all laughed, you know. But I'm, I'm here to say that I have not since Russell seen a Boston Celtic player that can make the type of blocks that Robert Williams is making and, and, and alterations that Robert Williams is making. We know he's not 100%. We know that this is a, a nurturing thing, that that, that uh, calibration thing that Amy has to be very careful how he uses them. And 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 every time something happens, you pray. There was a moment last night when we, we thought maybe he, he, you know, he hurt himself. But if he's playing, if he's out there to give them twenty to twenty five minutes, uh, they're they're going to win. Period. Well, here and Jalen's been better than Clay. Like Tatum and Steph, you don't you don't have to win that matchup, no. right? You just you just can't lose it significantly. Yeah. Um, Jalen's clearly been much better than Clay on both ends. And the other thing here is you've got Marcus Smart and Draymond Green that are similar in a lot of ways, right? Their toughness, their DNA, their defense. Here's the difference. Marcus Smart can give you something. He's an offensive threat. Draymond is not an offensive threat. I I put out a a stat this morning. Draymond shot 39% from three his senior year at Michigan State. Like people forget that. He could shoot. He, oh, could, I he averaged 16 points a game. He was he was an offensive threat then. I feel like it's almost been a disservice to Draymond having Steph. It, it helped him get in the league and stay in the league and thrive in the league defensively. 
but it stunted his, I don't know, growth is the right word. He's yeah. just regressed Progress. offensively because yeah. he's played with those guys and accepted his role. And instead of being a factor offensively, like Marcus Smart has done, he, he's a complete non-factor. No, and, and he's older too. It's, 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 you know, yeah. And he plays so hard, you know, this little tread off the tires, I think, you know, the factor. Not We're all older. Big, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're all older. And he, and he plays, and he, you know, and he, he leaves it all on the floor. He doesn't leave anything out. You know, he, he gives you what he gives. You know, so anyway, I, I, by the way, just in general terms, I love having him in the mix. It's fun to have a villain in the mix. It is needed. I mean, even Draymond is not really hateable. He's only hateable if you're a Celtic fan. Right. Right. Oh no! I'm, you know, why you think the other t- he doesn't do this to other every other team? In well, the league? he does. He does, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm a Celtic fan, but I still kind of like him, Bob. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I, I mean, I like it. Mind having on my, I, I, there are a few guys in the last ten years or twelve years that I really identified in college, and I really liked them. And he's one of them. Honest to God, I'm not. I know this is not revisionist history. I, I identified him at Michigan State. I liked him a lot, and I, right. uh, like, and, like and, Lambeer, Lambeer, I hated. And unfortunately, when I met him, he was a nice guy. <laughs> well, that'll that'll spoil everything. It, um, it, you know, I'm like, geez, Bill. You're a nice guy, you know. I mean, he was talking to us when, you know, during one of the playoff series with the Pistons and Celtics. I go, damn. Um, but like Draymond, I, he frustrates me, but I don't, I don't dislike uh, him. I, well, you know, that's just me. The thing about him is he can hurt you, and you got to, you know, he can hurt you. And of course, Marcus can hurt you. As Steph Curry knows, Marcus can hurt you too because they throw their bodies around, and and they're good bodies, and they can hurt you. You know, that's the only thing about it. But one thing I want to get out of the way is the Draymond factor in game two. We haven't had a chance to talk about that. Um, I was just talking to our friend Cedric Maxwell and, you know, the whole thing between Max and, oh, yeah. and Draymond, which on CLNS Media, this website you're watching, you can certainly catch up on, on the two jousting. <laughs> and I said, OK, this is great theater, but this is kind of the sidebar. This is the TMZ stuff. <laughs> that is great for the league. It's great for the league. It's great for the game. It doesn't really, it doesn't really have anything to do with the nuts and bolts of the game. So, Jeff, I'll start with you on this one. Draymond Green in game two was not the reason the Celtics lost. No, no. I mean, listen, Draymond Green certainly trying to get in the heads of these young guys, right? That that really are pretty even keel. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, you know, Grant likes to, Grant Williams likes to talk a lot. Uh, but I think I think Draymond might realize that's what he needs to do to win this series, to try to fluster him, to try to get him off their game a little bit. Maybe he honestly looking in says to himself, you know what? I'm not sure we can win otherwise. This, this is what I got to bring to the table. In addition to my defense, I got to play some mind games with these guys and that'll give us an edge. Listen, give them credit. Do whatever you got to do, Draymond. Just don't get kicked out of the game. That was a master class in envelope cushion. And he pushed the envelope right off the table and didn't, wasn't held accountable. And he knew what he was doing. He even, am I correct that he actually addressed it publicly that uh, he knew he had the technical, but he wasn't going to get thrown out of the game short of something egregious, hurting somebody. He wasn't going to get thrown out of the game because they're not going to toss a, an important player in a playoff game without a damn good reason. And he didn't give him quite enough reason to do that. He knew it. All right. Uh-huh. Now that said, going into game three, what was the dialogue? Oh, we got Scott Foster coming in to be the sheriff, you know, to make sure uh, he's not going to be able to do that again. That's it. That's as far as he's going to go. And and it didn't even begin to go close to where there uh, for whatever reason. Let's watch and see whoever reads game four and how he plays game four. But no, he knows what he's doing. You're 100 percent right. He, he identified that I got to do this. this. This is going to enhance our chances of winning. No one else can do this the way I can do it. But he knew. And, and that, I, he did push that envelope, of course. And and he was he he had the situation sized up accurately. They you weren't going to blow right. him out. If you're him, you're saying like, I don't know how these young dudes, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, are going to react. Let me give this a shot and see if I can get them rattled a little bit. Uh, and, and and again, like you know, well, we'll we'll see we'll see how it works. Draymond's got to focus sometimes on Draymond too, and sometimes he 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 kind of. Um, you know, let, let's clear of like what what's what's important now, Draymond. To me, you you got to be more productive with what you do. And sometimes I think 
he's thinking too much of how he can instigate, how he can get into the heads of some of these, uh, you know, the opponents rather than worried about his own game. Now, I find it very interesting the way Grant Williams stood up to him. And, and Grant Williams, uh, you know, I, he's, I think he's fascinated by the whole thing. And he's like, I'm not going to take that crap. I'm going to show the world. Right. You know? and, and, and you got to be careful. Yeah, interesting. He's a tough kid. Smart. We know he's a smart guy. And he's a tough guy. Um, he doesn't want to be Draymond Green per se. But, you know, I mean, he's not going to be that kind of guy as a player. But he wants to show the world I'm not going to be pushed around. By Draymond Green. Literally. I, I, yeah. I mean, literally, physically, I'm not going to get pushed around. I'm pushing Here's back. Here's the thing. Who else does Draymond have to back him up? Like, look at this team. Look at look at the Golden State Warriors team and how unintimidating they are, right? Like, Steph Curry, right. you're not scared of Steph. Clay, the nicest dude in the world. Andrew Wiggins, like, the nicest, quietest, like, non-confrontational kid ever. So, like, Draymond's out there on an island. Kevon Looney, he's big, he's strong, but he doesn't say two words. They don't have anybody. They don't have anybody. No. I, I, something occurred to me, guys, uh, yesterday, and that is an analogy. Now, they're a finesse team other than him. They are the finesse team in the league of, for, with experience, uh, 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 in terms of expertise and other than him. It reminded me, back in the day, the day and I, I uh, of the 60s and 70s, the Canadian, les habitants, they were, were, were beautiful skaters and Vanessa, one resident yeah. enforcer, oh, yeah. John Ferguson. And I'm, I'm thinking, is there an analogy here between what yeah. John Ferguson stood out as the one, you know, a guy for them at that time? Although I'm not sure where he overlapped with Chris Nylon, you know, but anyway, but Ferguson, I I just, that analogy just jumped out at me. But he is the, oh, you're right, you're so right. It's, he is the, they're resident uh, aggressive. And he's six six, and he's six six. Like you see him trying to rebound and defend Robert Williams. Yeah, and, and that's where I keep thinking back to like if they had James Wiseman, if they had oh, a healthy yeah, James man. Wiseman. Oh, that'd it's be seven oh. one. Like he could be Robert Williams. That that's who James Wiseman could be. Is. Uh, the, the guy who's just like Robert Williams. Well, maybe next year, maybe finally, you know, we had to wait two years for Joel Embiid to play. It, it, it can happen. So, you know, um, maybe it'll maybe then, I, but no, I know we both, we've been speculating about that all year and, but it never happened. And, and nope. yeah, that, that's, that's next year's story. But then again, there'll be another year, uh, you know, on the calendar for the, for the, the core group. So, yeah, uh, I mean, Steph will be 35. They could have used, right used them this year. Yeah. Right. Well, of course it's not, you know, it's, uh, we're, I'm not, cocky but i'm i'm feeling i'm very encouraged by that performance last night you know and uh so anyway okay uh agree or disagree bob it's not Draymond green but the achilles heel for the celtics turnovers and not stepping up on the switch i mean and sometimes they've had double screens where you see yeah, well, orford stepping back and ty stepping back and they got to get up in the shooter's face yeah well it's curry just specifically and and, and there are twice that and mark jackson cited that al sank back too far didn't challenge and you know you'd think a guy with al's experience would would you know would know better i'm, I'm sure that was identified i'm sure that he may be taking a look at that uh but let's remember you're talking about steph curry you can say even if you're in his jock, he can always do a, a quick a quick crossover dribble and step create space, you know, but you don't want to leave him, give him that kind of, but it doesn't even, it, it, he doesn't have to be that wide open to hurt you. You know that he's a, he's truly great. What I love, I love his complete game. I love when he goes to the basket. He's got that nice little mid range uh, floater thing. He's got a great left hand. Uh, he's a wonderful consummate offensive player. He, and, and, you know, he'll make the requisite pass, you know, he'll have the 31 points and all, where did those six assists come from? You know, but you know, he'll, he's not selfish. He's, he's, he, he just isn't. And he's, he's a, it's a treasure. You know, I, I enjoy watching him play. You know, Jeff, I thought last night Tatum was selectively selfish at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he played a good overall game and, and that's, you know, sometimes again, he's not going to blow you away and go for 40 every night. Um, but I, I feel like he's just grown and matured, you know, even watching him after the game, I, I feel like, Again, I've said this before, but his whole self-worth was on how many points he scored right. up until, honestly, the last few months. Yeah. And now I think he fully understands because they've won without necessarily – certainly he's gotten the, the, the bulk 
uh, of, of the share of the credit as a player. But for the most part, like he doesn't get it every night, right? Like he'll have a bad game, like game one. He'll have 13 assists, but but he didn't shoot it well. But he comes out the court now with a huge smile. And I think most of these players have now understood because they've lived it. Like you can get all the points you want, but if you're 500, nobody gives a shit. But you know what? If you win over and over and over, everybody tells you how good you are. And people are paying attention to you now. And I think not that Jason was super selfish. I, I never thought he was selfish. I just think, again, he thought his worth was built on how many points he scored. Where now it's winning. And he's just so much more mature the way he talks, too. So much more confident, mature, all of it. Like, that's the part that, and I've said this to him this year, that honestly, um, again, I've known him since he was like 15. So, like, to watch him mature. Right. It was it's cool for me to see how he's grown as a man, right? How how he he now has that confidence that he had none of it. I mean, he spoke very very uh, minimal amount of words, not Lonzo Ball, but but damn close. And now you see him up there, and I thought he gave a great answer when people asked him about being a superstar. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, you guys saw too. that answer, but I thought it was really insightful of him saying like. I never called myself a superstar. I don't know who did, but ultimately it doesn't matter. If, if we win, they can't say anything, but I'm a champion. That's all that matters. No, it's good. Well, you know, these guys have to go up in public and, and, and they're 19 years old. He started, he was 19 years old. Yeah. And when he came in here and, and so it's understandable that he wouldn't have the polish. Some guys are a, a, a precocious Grant Williams exhibit a, you know, they're not, I mean, that's, that is the extreme. Yes you're not going to find you wait another 10 years for you get another guy that walks in with the, with the, the whole swag, the not swagger, but the, the maturity and, and uh, intelligence and the whole package that Grant yeah, I was like talking to a grown man at, at 20 years old. Talking so, to Grant is like talking to, to but, but the rest of them, even if they're intelligent, you know, they, they have to, you know, like a, Jalen Brown be an example. He was always obviously quite intelligent, you know, but he's, he's learned how to, you know how to act in public, if you will, and they have to learn how to act in public. I watch it. Hey, I watch it with Larry. You know, and and Larry was older. Larry was twenty two years old when he was drafted, twenty three in his rookie year. And people, you know, because he had five years after high school with a, with the set transfer year, and and he had to grow up in public. And and the difference between Larry Bird when he came in and he was sullen and and and, and monosyllabic and didn't want to deal with us, and the Larry Bird who was like a raconteur by the time you know the the eighty six playoffs come. And, oh, my, you know, and, and he, he had the media in the palm of his hand and, and he grew up in public. These guys have to grow up in public. They have to get the experience. There's no doubt about it. OK, guys, looking down the stretch here, what is the key, Bob, for the Celtics to win and the key for Golden State to win? Well, the key for the Celtics is to just uh, we identify it a thousand times. Keep the turnovers down uh, to, and then otherwise just play the way, you know, that, that, that you have now become accustomed to playing, sharing the ball. Obviously, they, you don't have to talk about the defense. They know they're going to play the deep. They're, they're going to play uh, good, good defense. Um, and and try, you know, just don't let Curry go crazy, you know. And and, you got, and now you got to deal with Thompson too. But they, uh, I, I just think just the turnover thing is crucial. It it it, it is a, a, a either or. If they, if they don't turn it over, they they they're in good shape. And and uh, they, they didn't turn it over twelve times last night. I'll live with that. And uh, that's fine. So that's it. Don't do it. And I think they're going to prove out to be a, 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 a better team. Yeah, I, I think it's don't play too cool. Right. Don't don't relax. Oh, no. You know, play tough or be diving on the floor. Set the tone. You know, that that's what you got to do. In addition, obviously, like Bob said, just play smart. Right. Don't don't give them the ball. Don't make dumb, you know, dumb turnovers. Don't drive into traffic. Um, th those types of things. But I think it's just kind of keep your foot in the gas here. You know, and, and don't think you have this series in control right now because all it takes is is losing the next game. Yeah, that's right. Game four, and everything changes. No, that's a yeah. I right. treat this game four like it's a game seven, and right. and, and, and and then go from there. Close the door. Okay, now, a couple of sidebars here. I wanted to touch on with this. First was the rule with Al Horford getting the technical, the flagrant, on to me okay. just simply playing defense. I, I understand why the rule was put in place because someone got hurt, but I think it's ludicrous. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I, I, I've come around on this, uh, this idea of landing space. 
And, and you know, you got to defend better than that. You got to defend more intelligently than that, I think. And a guy like Al Horford particularly should know that. I'm not a problem. I don't have a problem with it. I don't, uh, it, it's, uh, I just think you got to be more intelligent about how you contest a three pointer. You know, come on. I mean, that was amazing because that led to a seven point possession, which is incredible, you know. But uh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm a, we're going to respect, we're going to agree to disagree. I, I, once it was explained to me, I said, yeah, okay, I'll live with that. Jeff? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with Bob on this one. I, I, I feel like, again, you got to be smarter than that if you're out. You've been playing a lot of basketball. Like, like yeah. to me, um, you just got to think more on, on that possession. And that's Al Horford's strength, right? That, that's all he does is probably overthinks. Uh, so I was surprised at that. But, um, yeah, I'm with Bob there. I, I, I just I, – I, I actually like the rule. Okay. Um, Cedric Maxwell, our colleague, said that if Draymond Green played in the 80s, uh, he would have got knocked the bleep out. Bob, I will uh, give you the floor. How would Draymond Green have done in the 80s? Revisionist history. Sorry. Uh, the 80s uh, were nowhere. Look, the, it wasn't that rough. There were, were, were the Pistons and everybody else. And they were the, actually the late 80s when, when Horn joined the team from, from uh, Washington. Um, right. Now, uh, come on, you know, it, it, look at the McHale thing. I mean, no, I'm sorry. No, the league was, the, that, that league of image was the 50s and 60s and a little bit into the 70s. Uh, I'm sorry, Max, I'm not buying that. No, you guys weren't that tough. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, like Dray Draymond wouldn't have been the toughest dude in the league, but he's not the toughest dude in the league right now. You know, like I don't, I don't think it would have been that different for Draymond. I, I really don't. No, I don't either. I right? think I mean, a nice, I'm, I'm, I'm just like Oakley. Like there was some big oh. dude. Like Oakley was a, a, you know, he was one that was feared. Um, but he how many others the were standard. there? Mickey Mahorn and Oakley, and a little bit before that, Maurice Lucas was the my standard yeah. of the seventies. Yeah, and but like. There were there were more bigger, stronger, tougher dudes. That that's what there were, right? Because the game has changed now. Where now it's more long, athletic dudes, right, right. and the bigger, stronger, plotting big men. I mean, the the Irvin Johnsons, the Jim McElveins, those guys aren't even in the league anymore, right? The Greg they, Kite, the Greg Kite, Greg Kite, who had a role and a, you know an auxiliary role of, of yep. value to the Boston Celtics. There's no role for him now, you know. Right. That's the difference, I think, is there's just fewer of those bigger, stronger, yeah. uh, you know, seven foot, 250 pound dudes. Instead, now you've got the 6'10, 225 pound dudes that aren't, the, the game just isn't played in the trenches as much, period. No, not at all. It's, it's completely perimeter. Oh, right. no, not at all. I, I, it's, I'm so excited every time Horford. Uh, got down low, you know, on mismatches and was powering himself in, you know, I was going, yeah, yeah, that's the way to play basketball, you know, because, you know, nobody starts, that, 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 that's, that's a broken play. Nobody initiates a post play ever now, not in this series anyway. Hey, let's go to some other NBA news. Bob wanted to touch on it. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't. I want Jeff's opinion and and, and insight here because you know he's plugged in more and uh, to what's going on. Well, in, well let's set it up here. Um, Donovan Mitchell is is Quinn Snyder. Yes, stepped aside. Quote unquote. He re resigned. That's what we're told. Okay. Uh, a how surprised Jeff? You have any rumbling that that, that that this was happening? And then the subplot is uh, the whole his relationship with Donovan Mitchell and the fallout from from what's happened there, in which uh, it was alleged that. That uh, you know the allegations about Mitchell and Mitchell's denying them about, uh, and he didn't, he, you know, his relationship was not good with Quinn. So what, what do you know about that, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, you heard rumblings that 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 obviously this whole thing was going to fall apart, right? Whether it's Quinn Snyder being out uh, when when Danny took over, um, and, and and then Utah didn't do well in the playoffs again, you knew changes were going to be made. Um, Danny's not going to sit along, especially, you know, his good friend is the owner. He's going to make changes here. And I think Quinn Snyder saw the, the, the writing on the wall. Here. Okay. It, you know, it had worn him down, you know, everything from, you know, the, the Rudy Donovan Mitchell relationship, which was obviously awful a few years ago um, and, and gotten better, certainly on the surface. So, yeah, I mean, the, the big thing here isn't Quinn Snyder at the end of the day, right? The big thing here is what do you do if you're Danny Ainge with Donovan Mitchell, with Rudy Gobert, 
do you blow this thing up? Because, you know, think about this, you know, the, the, the Knicks. So, so Donovan's agent is, is Ty Sullivan, who's at CAA. The mm -hmm. Knicks are run by Leon Rose. Leon Rose was Ty Sullivan's boss at CAA. Mm -hmm. World Wide West was at CAA. So obviously the tea leaves are there. And, and I think World Wide West was front and center for one game, like yes. mid-court yes. watching yes. Right. Donovan Mitchell. Quite conspicuous. Right. I mean, it was ridiculous. So obviously they're going to make a run at probably Donovan Mitchell. And, and, and players are going to decide – obviously if, if they want out or not that's that's the way the game is played now you know the game you know agents just say hey i you know we want to trade we're not playing here so if you're danny ainge you got you got to make a coaching change now and do you placate and this is this is not danny ainge inherently what he does but are you placating to donovan mitchell and or rudy gobert probably one or the other probably donovan and hiring a guy that, that that he likes. The name that I've heard, and there are a lot of names out there right now, one of which is Will Hardy with the Celtics. Uh, but a name I've heard is Alex Jensen. You know, he's a guy who played at Ut uh, played for Utah years ago in college for Majerus, uh, has been coaching in the NBA for years, mm -hmm. has a, a, a phenomenal reputation. He turned down, I think, the Utah college job a couple, two <laughs> years ago. He could have had it. Um, and turned it down because he wants to be an NBA head coach. So I could see him being the pick for Danny Ainge. But but again, the coach in this in this situation is secondary. The the big thing is what are you gonna do now? Are you gonna wait until Donovan Mitchell asks out and, and forces his way out, mm -hmm. or are you gonna say, you know what, let's get seventy five cents in the dollar right now for Donovan Mitchell and see what we can do. Do you regard the uh, Jazz as underachievers in the last year or two? No, I, I don't. I, I thought they overachieved in the regular season. Okay. How's that? I, right. I actually, I don't. I think what they did in the playoffs <laughs> was exactly what we thought they would have done had they not had great regular seasons. And, and to be honest, I never felt like Donovan Mitchell was going to – he's a fringe all-star. Like Jalen Brown and Donovan Mitchell. Who you? I, I put them in a similar category, okay, which are fringe all-stars. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's a good one. Um, yeah. Well, I just think Quinn Snyder, I always call him Elmer Gantry uh, that he has that wild eye look in his eye that, that Burt Reynolds had and Elmer Gantry and the curl coming down on the forehead. Every, I, 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 it just made, I, I almost smile every time I look at him on the sideline, uh, by the way, but you know, he, you, you, you expect that he will, I don't know, be quickly hired, but we'll see him again. Won't we? Oh yeah. Yeah. He did it. Listen again. I feel like if you look at their talent level and you look at what they did now, again, it's all built on playoffs, but what did they have? I mean, look at their, Mike Conley's older. He's not the same <coughs> player he's been. No, you, know, you, you had Jordan Clarkson, you have Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal. I mean, some yeah. of the guys they had really their, their roster was, was underwhelming to me again. Yeah. I, I thought they did exactly like if you had told me this is, and we were talking Quinn Snyder in the regular season, he's a coach of the year candidate every year. Now, again, I think they just raised the expectations higher than they probably should have been for that team going into the postseason every year. Okay. All, All right, right, guys. There you go, Gary. All right. Great stuff. Uh, and we'll talk to you again next week. Yeah. And maybe, uh, uh, hey, you know, could have some good news. What, 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 are we, what are we at? What, what game, game six is what? Thursday. Thursday is game six. Monday, Thursday, Sunday. That's that's five, six, seven. Monday, we'll have to Thursday, we'll have to rerun Sunday. the playoff preview when we said the Celtics aren't gonna win. Oh, I mean, I'm be... not gonna deny that I picked Milwaukee or that I didn't and, and probably I think we need team. we need to get some good good uh clips. Uh, yeah. somebody from CLNS needs to, to get some good <laughs> clips of us in well the ones would be good would be, be ones from January. <laughs> yeah, those would be we good. Need, we need some from January <laughs> cut up after this thing. We're gonna we're gonna change the name of this podcast to the experts question mark. Gents, thank you very much. All right guys. See ya. Thanks.